What's up, YouTube? It's your man, Will, from Will Talk Entertainment here. Back with another video. So today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to head over to uh, one of the premier shops here in Metro Charlotte. Um, they're actually located right um, outside of Charlotte. I want to say about, uh, about 40, 45 minutes outside of Charlotte. Um, they said I can come down and talk to them. And we're going to take a tour of their shop. Um, they're a well-known shop here in Charlotte. Um, most, some of you who are in the Mopar community who do a lot of work on their cars, you probably heard of the shop called Mass Acceleration. So uh, I'm going to go there, check out the shop, talk to some of the folks there, try to get a feel of, you know, what the environment is like, how they do their work, take a look at the shop and, uh, you know, get a different perspective um, from the uh, expert's point of view in terms of how they go about their builds. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, welcome to Will Talk Entertainment. Click the like, hit, click the subscribe button, kick the notification for when, um, when I put up these, when these videos become uh, published. Um, there's gonna be a lot of content coming. I told y'all I was coming. I know it was a little bit slow out the gate, but you know, there's a lot going on in the back, in the, in the, back, in the background. So um, uh, we'll get up with you in a minute. Yep, here I am. Mass acceleration, baby. This is gonna be interesting. All right, so here we are. I've arrived at mass acceleration. Hmm. My first time here, so we're gonna go inside. You must be Devin. Yes, sir. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Not too bad. They just they did a magazine magazine article about it. I think it was in, yeah, Mopar Action Magazine. Wow. So the turbos were, they're actually smaller here than they are now, so. So they've added bigger tur turbos. Yeah. So yep. when you had it at, at with the smaller turbos, it was, six, it was pushing 1600 horsepower. Uh, at that time it was, it was probably around more like 13, 14. 13, but now 14. we have uh, 20 millimeters on it. Okay. Yeah. So what's it push? what do you think it'll, just off the top of your head. Over, probably around 16 or over. It over just depends 16. on what we have it turned up to. That's kind of the joy of it. It's got a Motec computer system, so we can fine tune everything. It's air shifted turbo 400 transmission. All uh, the whole work's done on that thing. It's pretty, pretty crazy. It's actually here. Uh, if it's uh, if it's down out of the air, I'll show you around it. Okay. We're doing some transmission work on it. But so the office is obviously that way. Uh, we. Try to keep a little bit of everything on the shelf. We do a lot of Hellcat packages and everything, so I'm turn sure. pulleys, intakes, right. fluids, spark plugs, and then we do a good bit of engine building. So all this stuff right here is engine parts, but this is our engine room. It's actually a mess right now. We got quite a bit going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure with the yeah. streetcar takeover coming up, you got yeah. a lot going on. That's why I figured today would be a better day to do it rather than later in yep. the week. Yeah, we got trying to get this engine back together for streetcar takeover. A demon block. That's a demon block? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people that haven't even seen what a demon block. I mean they've seen it in some other YouTubers, but yep. Yep. gosh. Well, this is what a demon block looks like. It's completely stripped. Yeah. Wow. That is just the block itself. Everything else has been changed and mm -hmm. and all that, but wow. Gosh man. This is much this is an education right here. So we do predominantly the, the Mopar and late model GM, more LT based stuff. So that's kind of yeah. works in the shop right now. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well. We'll talk entertainment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice to meet you, nice man. Nice to meet you, uh, Greg Donaldson. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Greg talks 
talk so glowingly about this place. Gotcha. I met you guys last year at Streetcar Takeover. Okay. You had the booth. I came over. Yeah. And um, you know, we talked a little bit, and and it's just your your rep. Like I told him. The proof is in the pudding. When you see it on the track, that's how you know a shop. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you know a shop is good. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to come by and say hello and yeah. look at the shop and see a little, learn a little bit about what you guys do. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Now that's a rare one. Green with is that green with envy? Yeah, it is. The one year. Yep. Wow. Yeah, six feet car. Wow, looks like it's looks like it's getting ready uh, to be open for business. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you? Do? Oh, I don't want to. They probably don't want you to tell what they're doing to it. Most people are pretty. Oh no, no, that one, um, that one's simple. Uh, so that's the the dreaded, you know, 2011 gear. Um, What's dreaded about that? I keep hearing that. So with the six speeds. Uh, they changed the uh, spline count on the input shaft to the transmission. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the only year that they did it. Now, in English, what does that mean? So, basically, somebody... so basically, when you buy a clutch, generally when you buy a clutch for these things, the spline where the clutch slides on or slides into the transmission, they're generally all the same. Right. But with this generation, since it's the only year, um, it's hard to find a clutch for it. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So, um, so basically, but yeah, this one um, it's making some good power, so we're just you know putting a different clutch in it. Okay. That's all. All right. Sounds yeah. simple enough. I see you got a, a vet here. Yep. Yep. So is it primarily? I know you're known for Mopar, but I've also seen a lot of Chevys here too. Mm -hmm. Yep. LS and like you were saying, LT engines. Yeah, more predominantly the LT based stuff is what we what we're diving into with the C8s and all that coming out being LT platform trying to okay. learn the ins and outs of those we've done Hemi stuff since 2014 previous right. so trying to dive into new market okay looks like a, is you're putting on a rear end over there yep yeah putting it back together that one built the engine okay for it. got a built transmission rear end should be making a good bit of power wow and what I noticed about you, I know Greg has shared some some pictures. When you guys tear down a, a, an engine, mm -hmm. you guys like, like for example, let's just take headers for example. Mm -hmm. You do it differently than what some shops do. Yeah, we drop the engine. We drop the engine, yeah. which is the right way to do it yep. than trying to squeeze in there. and Yeah, you scratch some stuff up. And it, there's some areas where when you got to torque stuff down, it's, it's a pain in the ass to try and get through there with you got an extension going this way that way trying yeah to yeah it. it saves time on our end and the customer's end to where you get it done right the first time mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about issues and it's it's just a lot cleaner and a better install if you do it that way okay so this thing's pretty cool this is a f1 per charge six four can't really talk about power numbers this is, yeah this yeah is a, a hush one but it's got a holly high rim intake that we're doing a tick performance intercooler floor through the middle of it you can see the hood on the roof right there we had to cut it to fit all this yeah 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 so. wow it's a it's a bad bitch yeah it looks it yeah this thing is, this thing would be cool and it's done it's a regular stingray but it's gonna be making a lot more than a regular stingray does now this is um now is this a considered? I'm not that up to date on my on my Chevys. Is this considered a C6? This is a C7. C7. Okay. So the C6 C7. are the more rounder ones. Right. The C7s are the more angular, right. aggressive ones. C6s are all LS based. All right. And, and these this are all LT. LT based. Yep. Right. That makes LT. sense. Just like the six gen Camaros and everything, those are all LT. Wow. Yeah, just watch your foot right there on that plug plumbing. Yep. Always gotta remember to look down when you're in a shop. Nothing really special about this one. Just doing some basic stuff to it. But this it's, is actually that turbo car. Yep, yeah. there it is. Oh. One in the pictures. Wow. Yeah. I've never seen it in person. I've seen tons of pictures and videos with it. Oh. This is the first time I've ever seen it in person. Yeah, or having to redo some stuff and all that. Wow. He's dropping it down so we Let's get a shot of the engine bay and all that. See the turbos. Yeah, 
this is a full weight actually weighs more than a stock charger we haven't taken a single pound out of it pretty much we've added weight with the turbos and everything i would say yeah it yeah. still has ac radio the owner takes his son to get an ice cream in it <laughs> so. so folks imagine yeah you're going for ice cream and say hey dad let's go get some ice cream sure yeah so you got twin 80 millimeter turbos and a G1 Pro custom intake manifold that has a similar setup now that I had the intercooler for it, but it was exposed. This has water running through it to keep it cool. Wow. You'll this see. must sound ridiculous when you turn it on. Oh, it sounds like straight turbo. Yeah. You can see it's full. That's, we've got two race seats in it, but full interior there. And still has the back seats back here. And it's got a parachute, but we took it off just for ease of access right now currently so does he take the back seat out when he's racing no really the, honestly those seats don't weigh much okay the, the seats that if you're going to take a seat out of these cars to to really lose weight is the passenger seat especially the power seats right. that's where all the, the weight is these are maybe five pounds if that because it's mainly just foam with wire okay wire holding it together but yeah it's it's pretty sweet full, full weight and then back here is catch cans and all that fun stuff two batteries to power everything nice rotary <laughs> switch this is the tank for the air shifter so oh my God. air shifter and uh so the wastegates are co2 controlled so that way we can control how much boost it's making yeah nothing like your regular definitely a grocery getter oh yeah you know <laughs> hey still got a tag yeah and then over here this is where our dyno cell is where we do all of our we do all of our tuning in-house Minus that car, because that car makes too much power to put on this type of dyno. So we have right. to have a hub dyno for that. We don't have one of those. It, wow. It'll just spin on here. But so we have a two-wheel drive dyno jet dyno that we're able to dyno all the cars, even the Jeeps and the Durangos and all that stuff, even a TRX. Oof, the look TRX at the paint barely job. fits on this thing. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. It's, it's humongous. Yeah. Look at the paint job on this. Yeah, it's a wrap. It's all uh, What's it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a wrap. It's originally this orange. Orange color. Cinnamon stick. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not good with the, the name of the color. Yeah, that's all right, that. man. I mean, it's just, <laughs> I've yeah. never seen a, a wrap like this. This is yeah, definitely it, unusual. it definitely captures attention, but this car is pretty cool. It's on a airlift performance, air ride suspension. So it, it's strapped up or else I'd show you and air it down for you, but it'll, nah, it'll yeah, sit yeah. on its on its face. And we just put the new three liter Whipple supercharger on it. It is a old red eye blower had some issues just from wear and tear and so yeah. opted to go for the bigger one the full bigger disclosure i used to own a 50th anniversary hellcat okay i had 52 out of 501 mm -hmm. and when i took mine to the track the very first time mm -hmm. that magnuson supercharger got hot and i didn't do i only did maybe two passes yeah just i didn't do any burnouts like i said mm -hmm. i was just i was first time at the track on the track no burnouts, nothing. Just went down the track just to yeah. see, just to learn how to stage and get a feel. And that magazine was just so high. After two passes, I, you know, I pull over and just kind of let it cool off a yep. little bit. Is that something? Is that typical of the Magnuson supercharger, where it just gets? <sighs> it, I wouldn't say it's typical of just the Magnuson itself. Like obviously, any supercharged vehicle, you're going to be making more heat than a regular natural. Right. But what's good about the Hellcat platform, and what year was yours? A 2020. A 2020? Okay. Uh, typically, I'd, I forget what model years had them. They started adding their, this like a chiller system that uses the AC. 17 and up, I think, yeah. is when they started doing that. But yeah, so it had that, I, I would actually hear the system yeah. kick in, yeah. kick on. But when it was kicking on, I didn't want to go back on the track when it's kicking on no, like that. You, can, you just, let, you just uh, let the car idle and it'll yeah. it'll cool it down. Okay. That's why you see a lot, like if you go to a more good track strip, for example, there's guys with Hellcats and they're sitting in the staging lanes letting their car run. Right. And the average person would be like, "Well, why are they doing that? They're they're heating the car up, but in all actuality, they're they're cooling they're it, cooling down. it with the with the AC system." Okay. So, so there was really nothing for me to worry about at that time. Cause... No. Yeah. No, okay. they they get hot, and as long as you don't let them get too hot, you know. Yeah. Because that's when you have issues. But as long as you're watching it and keeping it keeping it cool. So if I got a Hellcat and you know I make two three passes, what's the temperature that I need to pay attention to where it's like okay it's getting a little hot? That would be a question for the tuner. Uh, okay. I'm not I'm not good with specifics as far as temperature reading and everything. So yeah. 
that would be a question for him. I know just more a little bit of everything. He kind of knows the specifics of because those exactly. are, and that's why it's good to go to the track. Yep. Stop because it's like those are the questions that when I go there, I I come back with okay. So when I go back, I need to find out well what's the temperature where I should say make it cut it off, pull it aside, let it you know idle and cool yep. down. And and I think that's good for people to know yep. so they don't blow their engines. Yeah, and one of the things when uh, Hellcat's brought to us and we do one of our Hellcat packages, we change the thermostat in the car. Okay. So we go at 180 degrees, which is a colder thermostat. So it opens when it gets hot, like it opens sooner, so that way you're mm -hmm. cool in the car. Quicker. Okay. And it just, it's better. When you're spinning them that much, you want a colder thermostat, so that way you're trying to get as much out of it as you can. A little, Obviously, break a little bit of fabrication here. We used to have a four-pound fabricator, but one of the race teams stole him to go build NASCAR chassis. So really, yeah, so he he's still a good good guy and everything. But yeah. we we have a part-time fabricator that comes in and does stuff whenever we need it done. Yeah, like for example, we had to open, you know, cut the hoods. So you can yeah. get the yeah you know, the, yeah and like the pipes jetting. connecting the the turbos to the mm -hmm. throttle body and all that. All it's all custom, so we have to have someone someone do it. God, this this just looks mean. Yeah, this, this is it's a cool car, and with the three liter, it makes over 900 now. <laughs> yeah. I remember just when I had my Hellcat 700, I was like, whoa, this is, and then no. I went to streetcar take over, I was like, I'm not fast at all. Yep. You, that's when it really hits you. Yeah. It's like, dude, you're a streetcar, but you're not. Yeah. You, want, you, you haven't seen speed yet. Oh, that's, this, the numbers that people have nowadays are crazy. It's like, growing up for me, it was... You know, four six hundred horsepower is a lot of horsepower, and now yeah. I'm at the point where I can afford four six hundred horsepower, but that's not a lot of horsepower anymore. It's I'd go back even further. The first muscle car that I I fell in love with was a Fox Body. Okay. That's yeah. two hundred forty five. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. it was still spinning the tires oh, and yeah. smoking the tires. Yep. So, this is. And now you have this, which, I mean, granted, the three liter Whipple is not just a simple bolt on, but typically you, we could get these numbers. Of, some bolt-ons on the Hellcat. You do a lower pulley or upper pulley E85 and you're right there. Really? Yeah. Yep. Now, I'm glad you said the Hellcat. Now with the Scats, it's a little bit different. Scats are more at naturally aspirated. Yeah. Street car. You, you can't necessarily, you could put the bolt-ons on it, but yeah. you gotta be really, a little, it's a little bit more intricate intricate when it comes to like the internals of that. Yeah, you, the have, lifters. you have a limit. And right. it's kind of, Kind of around 600 wheel is what we go with keep the six four around okay don't really go want to go over that just because that's we found the safe that's our safe spot we don't mm -hmm. unless like a customer is overtly like i want this power number we're going to tune it towards making good power but it's reliable and it's right not, you're not going to have issues right because quite honestly what the number on the dyno sheet says doesn't matter because <laughs> for example we had it was a red eye charger we did and i think it made nine something on our dyno and he mm -hmm. took it to a dyno local to him he lives up in nashville in the mountains and it made over a thousand so every dyno is different ours read one number another one read a different number and we've had shops with the same setups and have their shop makes a higher number than the car that has the same setup here but yet they go race each other at the track and we beat them so, so oh so what was the name of the dyno you called this it? is a dyno jet so you dyno see jet side, side right here there's different brands. okay you have Dino Jet, Mustang Dino, uh, Dino Dynamics. They're That's what I wanted to ask you. The difference between a Dino Jet and say a Mustang Dino. The parameters and the software in them is, is what's okay. different and just kind of how they, how, I think how they process it. I don't know the specifics of like what exactly is different. Okay. Typically what people say is the Mustang reads lower than the Dino Jet. Our Dino Jet actually is a lower reading Dino Jet and mm -hmm. we kind of like it that way, you know, because we're able to do the proof at the track and we're not saying hey we made this crazy dyno number look what right. we did we'll make a number that might be a little lower than the next shop up up in a different state but yet we'll go run a tenth or two faster than them at the track okay so yeah, let's get back so that gets back to what i was saying about the dyno number doesn't really matter right it does for people like they want to see what it makes obviously but as far as oh this guy makes this much more power and everything we we let our talking do at the track you know. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I see it up close, folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't, you know, there's not a, you won't be seeing commercials with mass acceleration because they're heads down working hard yep. to get these cars on a track and not just get them on a track, get them on a track to where they're, they're the, the owners of these cars get the outcome that they want. 
is a difference between, hey, let me go put all this stuff together and get all this horsepower. But when you go to the track, you get you don't get the performance. Yep. They do the performance. They do the they put it together. They do the build, and you're going to get the performance. Yeah. And one of the things that we kind of strive for here is setting realistic goals with people. Right. Because I'll get people like yourself who have scat packs and five seven cars and just non not Hellcats, and their first thing they say is they want to beat a Hellcat, <laughs> and they don't like the answer that I give them because most of the time I'm like, sell it and get a Hellcat. Yeah. Just because yeah, right. the money, you're going to have to put 30 grand into a scat pack to beat a stock Hellcat. Because mm -hmm. to get to that 700 horsepower number, like I said, we stop at 600. So we want to build the engine. You're needing some sort of boost fuel system. By the time you're there, you're 20, 30 grand deep into the car that you're not going to recuperate if you go and sell it. Yeah. Versus you go get one of these, put five grand in it, and you're making seven, 800 to the wheels, and you can still go get your money back for it. Yep. And you're not really stressing it as much as you are if it's a scat pack that you're doing a build on yeah yeah and they don't like to hear that but i don't want someone to be disappointed in what they get you know that's, that's absolutely the thing is there's shops that will oh you call them that you want to do this they're like sure we'll do it but yeah at the end of the day that's they're going, really not what you want you and know? they're going cha-ching yep. yeah that's yeah. exactly what they're doing we're not some shop that will just take your money we could but we're, what's, what's good in that we have our reputation for a reason so it's yeah like, we don't want anyone to be disappointed in what they are, and that's that's something we strive for. That's why we we have good reviews and good clientele and everything. It's we're very open and honest about everything, and that's like one of the big things is you'd be surprised how many people don't know that any sort of tuning on these vehicles voids your powertrain warranty. Yeah, I, well, that yeah, because as soon as you start messing around with the PCM, yep, the second the second we plug an unlocked PCM in these cars, it puts a hard code into other body control modules. So yes, we can see that code, but if we go and try to erase it, it's going to pop back up, and the Dodge dealer is going to see it right away. Yeah, and there's no way around it. I've had so many conversations with people. Where it's like, oh my buddy, they uh, they told me I could do this, that, and the other. And yeah. it's like you can't. There's there's really no there's no way around it. It it, it is what it is. Dodge did that for a reason because mm -hmm. they know how easy it is to make power on these cars and they don't want someone to go make power and then break something and turn it back to stock and be like yo what the hell happens yeah and yeah so. now with that said and i'm just curious to get this your your this shop's take what do you think about direct connection uh you know there that's good for for the guy who wants to still keep the warranty i don't mm -hmm. have that much knowledge on it because it's still yeah it yeah, hasn't it's really still fresh. still fresh it's still yeah. you know it, i mean really yep. i only i only heard about it i think once at the beginning of the year yep. like around january yeah. december january and you know i, I guess it's, it's made for those people who want to keep their warranties yep. and still want to be able to go and have fun and, yeah. and everything the only thing that i i worry about is you know are they going to get the same care that you guys and that, that'll be the big question that is the big question because i guess it, it depends on like what direct connection shop they take their vehicle to because mm -hmm. nothing has been confirmed yet but we've had some conversations with some guys from direct connection about potentially us being a direct connection authorized shop i think they that's so, a no-brainer for me for at yeah. least i in my view yep. you guys should be like the number yeah. at the top yeah. the very top so i guess at that point it just comes down to like any other shop out there is who's working on your vehicle and that's right. why we take pride in, in quali doing quality work and we take our time it's like our tuning is I, I talk to some guys and they're like oh how long do i need to leave my car there and i'm like eh, depending on what it is a couple days to a week to two weeks mm -hmm. and they're surprised by that because there's a lot of shops out there that will tune by the hour and send you on your way and they do that and they just do some it's called, they'll, they'll do watt tuning so wide open throttle they're going to do that the watt tuning maps okay we like to really focus on the drivability especially with cam cars and superchargers supercharged cars and all that stuff you can only do so much on the dyno you right. can't simulate you sitting in traffic going from 15 to 30 and sitting at a red light and all there's different variables and different environments that the car is going to be in that you just can't replicate on the dyno right so that's why we do our our tuning on the dyno but then we go do the drivability and dial it in on the street so that way you're happy with it and i can pretty safely say that like we haven't had a car come back for tuning issues now the cars break that's not on us because you know you're you're pushing cars hard so like parts yeah. are going to break and manufacturer errors and all that but as far as tuning 
Yeah, we, we spend a little more time on the cars than than the next shop, but we don't have them come back, and that's for a reason, you know? Right, right. Because they're right the first time, and that's, what, that's just what we strive on, is being right, doing it right, doing it cleanly, doing it professionally, doing it to the best of our ability. We treat every car like it's our own. And and the thing is, is like, you know, when people want to come and do work, you know, be pre- don't be afraid to spend the extra money to do the get the the yep. work done correctly i'd rather spend extra money here yeah and know that you know i'm comfortable i'm confident leaving the shop that it's been done the right way no shortcuts have been taken because yep. you spend a lot of money i mean this is this is a red eye yeah it is yeah so you're, you're talking about 90 90 grand yeah. out the door so you want a shop that's reputable you want a shop that you know will take care of your car and, and do exactly. what you want and i could I could, you'd be surprised how many people I have conversations with. I tell them a price or something, and they're like, oh, you're crazy. Because, you know, we are, we're more expensive than, like, the run of a mill. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because it just inherently, and then they'll go and take it to their buddy's friend down the street who said they'll do it for a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. And then two months later, they're calling me and about to spend, spend twice, if not more, than what we originally talked about. If they would have not tried to take it the cheaper route for Joe Blow down the street and just let the professionals do it, but... You know, yeah, you, I mean, you, that's their choice to make at the end of the day. So exactly. And, you know, it's yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. You know, you get what you pay for. And this is in this case, this yep. is exactly that you're getting what you're paid, what exactly. you pay for. But yeah. wow. I and mean, all this is just stuff that's waiting for waiting for things to happen. Just waiting for parts. That's that's the biggest thing right now is just waiting for parts. It's it's so hard trying to get parts. Yeah, you got three yeah. four hours just looking into one fitting that trying to find someone who has it in stock you know it's yeah it's, now it's look, annoying. i'm interesting you bring that up because now i know steve white mm-hmm. a lot of people get parts out of steve white yeah. have you guys uh, um do you have a relationship where you do that or uh we might get some stuff from steve white if none of our other dealers are are able to get it but okay we, we have a good relationship with Waldorf Dodge there up in Wisconsin. Okay. And they we get a lot of parts through them or through uh, Hendrick uh, out in Concord. Okay. Or Everett for GM stuff. It just it depends on what it is. And right now it's like we're getting it from wherever we can get it from pretty right. much. You know, it's, right. There's no, yeah. We can't be as selective as we were in the past because it's just like we need the parts here. Yeah. And even like today we, we needed a starter for this car because the starter went bad and got a new starter put it in went to plug it in and realized that one of the plugs was broken even though it was mm. a brand new starter and no one around them has it and we waited a week for that so it's like so now it's another probably another week ho- hopefully not hopefully they, they not promise yeah. me it wouldn't be another week but, but we'll <laughs> see and uh it it's just things like that it, it it's the name of it's the nature of the business and it's yeah. right now it's just a lot worse than it usually has been in the past the, and, and I wonder now with that hap with it being like that nature of the business now where it's so hard to get parts in a timely fashion it kind of makes you wonder like this coming weekend streetcar takeover how how cars are gonna perform yeah, you I know mean, even the quality I mean the, the build in some of the parts now is yeah just some shops are probably just having to make do with what they can get and everything so yeah but with stuff like streetcar takeover and texas 2k typically more often than not it's a little higher quality of a build it's not like you go to a mooresville test and tune third right. night event where you got some yeah. dude who threw a 5-0 and a and a cracked out caprice or fox body or something and it's just like <laughs> yeah. up there with a cigarette hanging out his mouth going down the drag strip and nothing wrong with that but yeah you know no you uh, yeah and i don't want to under no circumstances yeah. am I even yeah, no. trying to compare it. But no. yeah, it's just, uh, you just wonder because you know that, that people want these parts, they want them quick, and you just yeah. hope that they're taking the time and care and building those parts, yeah. knowing that they're going to be providing it to shops like yeah. Mass Acceleration. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things is we try to choose manufacturers that don't lack on quality control. Yeah. Especially when they're, even though we'll wait X, however long we need to, as long as it's still quality parts. We're not like, don't rush it and cut corners for us. Right. We're not going to cut corners here. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're driving this vehicle, that's your life, you know? Like if, oh yeah. Like suspension yeah. components, if we went with like a cheap, we use a lot of, uh, it's uh, performance development suspension parts. 
and they're built at CNC Parks, and they're just a quality component. It's like we're happy with their product, so mm -hmm. that's why we use it, and it's reliable. We just we have kind of we've been in the market long enough that we know which brands are out there and which ones are good and which ones right. use certain parts and don't use these parts. Not that they're bad, just that there's better options out there. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you giving. Is there, oh, well, let me ask: Is there any more any parts of the shop, or is it? Uh, I mean, no. This is just kind of the storage, waiting for okay. waiting for stuff to happen, and nothing real crazy back here. This car is cool. It's under cover right now. I show it to you. It's a it's a C7 Corvette. It makes mm. it right around 1,100 horsepower. It's a road race car. You know what? My eyes keep going to this right, right here. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes keep this keep wandering over to this this Viper over yeah. here. This this has to be what is this a 93? Honestly, I don't know. I'm not a. I feel not like this is a 90. Yeah. I I feel like this looking at the back, this looks like about 93, 94. -ish. Yeah. Early version. Now, we're not doing anything crazy to this. I think it came in for some diagnosis work for a, for a dealership that bought it and is trying to sell it. Yeah. Man, these things are going for so much money now. It's just, it yeah. is absolutely ridiculous. Oh yeah. Wow. And it's still a early nineties Dodge interior. <laughs> <laughs> you can... Yeah, still plastic. Yeah, yeah. All that fun stuff, but they're, they're good cars, they're cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we got a 392 shaker. Turbo Camaro. Ah, Gen 5. This is Alice, but nice little turbo right there. Yeah. And so <laughs> this is another thing I learned from going streetcar takeover. The amount of cars that had turbos on them. Oh yeah. Why? Why is it? Why? Why is it? Is it because of the? What's the reason with all the ter all the cars now just putting turbos on all the muscle cars putting turbos on them? They make good power, you know. Mm -hmm. And what's cool about the turbo, in my opinion, versus a supercharger is you can set up a turbo depending on your computer system and everything mm -hmm. to run a certain amount of boost, but you can adjust it depending on how you set it up. Versus a supercharger, you have to change pulleys, belts, and all that. And turbos. Are a lot are good for a lot more power typically now there are the big top fuel like blowers yeah. that are bigger than the engine itself but so you see the size of those two turbos on the yeah, 80 yeah. millimeters we're getting a good amount of power out of it to get that amount of power out of a supercharger we'd have to go to like a a lot bigger top fuel not quite top fuel style but a big big supercharger to get that power so my buddy who's who runs streetcar 101 magazine mm -hmm. Um, we, he learned that the hard way. Yeah. We went to Wilkesboro last year, and it was a he has a one LE, mm -hmm. and he was racing an F one fifty. Little did he know the F one fifty had boost, had a turbo on it. Yeah. So the F one fifty just blows him away, and we're like, we're sitting there, I'm watching it, scratching my head. We went, we go after the event to get something to eat. Here the F one fifty comes back around, and he goes. And we go like what are you running he's like yeah i got you know turbo i got a two tur twin turbos in there and i got yeah. boost he only had it up to seven pounds of boost oh yeah yeah he said he could have turned it up more but he just wanted i guess he just wanted to make a point yeah, <laughs> yeah. so that so that goes so that's that's the big thing you're at an event and you're going through the you know you're racing for money like a street car takeover you can just adjust it no. each time on yeah. the fly without it and that's yeah. what he was doing because he was looking at my friend's car while he was adjusting it and smiling yeah, yeah. Yep. wow yeah there and you can do that you can do that a lot it just it depends on the computer system that's running the car okay yeah. but like this f-150 behind you should be a, a pretty nasty nasty build when we're done with it well, let me guess it got a turbo on there too no, it, oh no it supercharged yeah. oh yeah no it uh Oof. Not, I can't really disclose much about it. Oh no, it's alright, yeah. Yeah, it's actually, a, he, he's got a Durango Hellcat and some other stuff. We don't, we don't really ever touch board, but he's a good customer of ours and he came to us with the, an idea of making this truck run eights and we were like, we'll, oh. we'll go for it. Yeah. yeah, and it's light enough. Yep. Yeah. yeah so, wow. It should be pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it's, it's definitely going to be a test because it's all wheel drive, so. <laughs> Yeah. Gosh, all-wheel drive and supercharged. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'll say he's gonna have a little bit of fun. Oh yeah. Jeez. 
Yep, that's kind of that's pretty much what we got going on right now. Sometimes it's a lot more than others, and just kind of depends on the week. Yeah. Sometimes this lot looks it's full. Sometimes it's not. It just just depends on how the shop's going and what's what's happening that week. Now, I just I gotta ask. I saw a 300 around the corner. Is that an SRT8? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. my God! I knew it. And you know how I knew it because SRT8 looks. They were only around for a couple years, yeah. but you can tell them from the body. Yep. Yeah, so that one actually. That's a unicorn. Yeah, we actually. Her. It's it's got a six four in it. Right. Uh, but I guess. Well, I guess it might not be an SRT8. It might just be a regular RT. I'm okay. not sure <laughs> which exactly, but it was swapped with a six four. We didn't do the swap or anything. Yeah. We just did tuning on it. But it, it was brought to us not running right. So they had just completed the swap and everything and we got it running right for them. But I, I love the look of this car. I, I, I've had this conversation over and over and over again. And I said, you know, I wish Stellantis, well back then at FCA had given this car a little bit more attention. Cause it, yeah. well, this car with a Hellcat motor. Oh yeah. Would just be nasty. And this is like you said, it's a, it'll be a grocery getter because it had all of the the options of it's a luxury a, car. Yeah, it's got AC cup holders, cooling cup holders in it. Yeah. Like it, uh, it's it's a nice car. And with it being 6.4 swap, it's got a little more pep than just, just your average one. And wow. I love it. I love how the tire setup looks on it and everything. Where's that car? <laughs> oh my god. that car makes it this week yeah it, it's, it, it should be at our booth i don't know if we're if we're running it or not but it should uh regardless it'll be be out at our booth okay well you know i'll be there yep. again this year yep. <laughs> coming, yeah. coming back this year yeah we'll be there yeah i don't i don't know if we'll be there we'll probably be there friday and saturday and then yeah we might try and bring this out to the twin peaks event thursday night they just just we'll see how it goes okay you know what? Well, man, I appreciate this so yeah, much. No this, is, this was a treat. Yeah. And, you know, when I was just like, I, I wasn't sure if you guys were going to be open today, but yeah. I'm sure glad I came. Yeah. All right, folks. So there you have it, man. Um, great conversation. Uh, great, uh, great meeting the, uh, the team and seeing the work that they do. And, um, you know, I hope this gave you a little bit more confidence as it did for me. Um, about where you want to take your car and get it done. Again, this is mass acceleration. Um, you can see this is their information, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday appointment only and closed on Sunday. And there is their information. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I enjoyed it. I learned a lot today and I'm gonna continue learning on this journey. So, um, like subscribe hit the notification button and please please share the videos man this is important you guys spend a lot of money on these cars you want somebody that you can trust to work on them so uh, like subscribe and share this video and let people know you know that there's a place there's a there's a shop that you can trust i'll see you later i'll see you on the next video take care